that are with us today. Let's let's welcome and our second time guests and our third time guests and uh, yeah and, and our family. Let's welcome our church family. We're so glad that you are here. If you are a first time guest with us, we would love for, for you to stop by our connection window. Right over there, we have a gift for you, and we're so blessed that you're here. Yeah, Amen. If you uh, have your Bible, and I hope you do, how many still carry a Bible with you? You got the actual Bible with you, the Bible. There's four, a few of us left. A few of us left. Now, how many have it on your phone, at least? You got the phone. All right, all right, good, good, good. So open your phone or open your Bible, the First Chronicles, chapter 4. We're in a series. We just started a series last week um, called The Prayer of Jabez. And we're just looking at this ancient prayer that this, this dude named Jabez started praying and why he started praying it. And last week was incredible. We had a good time last week, did we not? Yes. Amen. Four of us did. The rest of you got to wake up. Let's get our worship team. Come on back up. We're going to wake them up. Come on. Come on. Testify. Let's shame the devil. You had a good time last week? Yes. Amen. Amen. Good, good, good. Amen. So 1 Chronicles chapter 4. 1 Chronicles chapter 4. I'm going to read out of the new international version of NIV. It'll be up there for you. We're in a season of 21 days of prayer, and I'm telling you, God is moving. God is moving. And I want to thank every single one of you that showed up for our in-person prayer meeting yeah. this past yeah. Friday. Yeah, it was, it was great. And if you missed it, you missed it. I know we couldn't Facebook Live it, so you missed it. But those that showed up in person, yeah. it, was, it was awesome. And I'll tell you what. I said this on Friday, the most important meeting that the church could ever do is the yeah. prayer meeting. Yeah. If you can make a prayer meeting, that's, that's the most important. This is why we're, we're taking 21 days to pray, to seek God, to listen for his voice. And I want you to get ready because as you've already heard, encounter is coming. The revival nights are coming. Revival is for us. Revival happens in us. Yes. Before it ever happens in the community. It's for the church. You know what it means to be revived? It means to be awakened. We need to be, the church needs to be awakened so that we can make a difference. That's what the revival nights are for. And so we are believing God. I'm telling you, I believe we're going to see signs, wonders, and miracles in the name of Jesus. Years. There's a couple things I want you to do. I want you to invite people. I want you to be praying for what God's going to be doing. And if you know, there's people that are sick. There's people that are in bondage. There's people that need deliverance. There's people that need healing. Bring them. It's not just for, these revival nights are not just for uh, the church. They're for the, 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 the community as well. And I believe we're going to see souls saved this weekend. With four of you, just agree with me. At least four of you. <laughs> All right. Come on, you know that I like to hear you shout back at me. All right, okay, there you go. Good, good. So we're in a series called The Prayer of Jabez, and if you weren't here last week, we dove into this book, First Chronicles, um, and we found a bold prayer that is kind of hidden in the family lineage and the family tree of Israel. And what we're doing is we're using this prayer. Oftentimes, we take the prayers that are in the scripture and we can use them as a model in our own lives to pray, help us to pray. When the disciples saw Jesus' prayer life, they said, Lord, would you teach us how to pray? They saw that there was something different in the way that Jesus prayed. And he prayed, our Father that art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, right? And, and that's a model that we use. Well, the prayer of Jabez is a model that we use during our prayer time. And so I'm going to read it in uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 4, starting in verse 9. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mother had named him Jabez, saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel. Here's his prayer. Oh, that you would bless me. Thank you. And enlarge my territory. Did the Holy Spirit just tell you I needed that? Thank you. <laughs> Let your hand be with me. And keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. And everybody, look at this. And God granted his request. Amen. God answered his prayer. Amen. So last week we learned that the word blessed in the Hebrew is the word barah. Barah. You got to put the ah on it. The barah. Yeah. And, it, and it means to bend down on the knee. In other words, Jabez was asking God, God he, listen, he, he 
got God's attention because he said, God, would you, would you bend down on your knee and pour into me everything that you have for me? You see, God, the, there's a label on my life. And, and, and nobody really expects much from me. Nobody really thinks I'm going to do much. But would you bless me? Would you, would you bless me indeed? Would you bend down and pour into me everything that you have for me? And so the big idea is that God wants to bless us. Not so that we can keep all of the blessings to ourselves. But so that we can be a blessing to others. Blessed to be a blessing. Blessed to be a blessing. God wants to bless us so that he can bless people through us. And see, that's where we get it wrong. We think God bless me so that I can have two houses, four cars, 12 dogs, you know, all, all that. No, no, no. It's God bless me so that I can then take the blessing. There's nothing wrong with having things, by the way. God bless me so that I can have those blessings and use them for your glory. God, God. And so last week we had a wonderful time at the altar where we, we responded and said, God, we want yeah. God to bless us like that. We want God, would you bless, would you pour into us provision? Would you pour into us wisdom? Would you pour into us spiritual gifts so that we can use them for your glory? And so what I want you to see is that this prayer is something that is going to kind of build on each other. In other words, today we can't pray for God to enlarge our territory until he first blesses us. Each one is going to, to kind of move up, up the ladder, if you will. So I want to focus on part two, and that is ex enlarge your territory. Come on, I want you to just high-five your neighbor say, it's time to enlarge your territory. Enlarge your territory. There you go. High-five. We can touch now again. Amen. We can touch. It's okay. Father, in Jesus' name, over the next few minutes, Lord, we just thank you for your word. Your word is sharper than any double-edged sword. It's able to pierce the depths of our hearts, God. It transforms us, Lord. Transform our mind, the way that we think, the way that we see, God, that we would have hearts that break for the things that break your heart, God. Lord, we've come into this place, Lord God. Now we pray that you would enlarge our territory. In the name of Jesus. And everybody say, Amen. The word territory here in the, in the NIV is territory. If you have an older translation, it might say uh, something like border. Enlarge my border. It might say enlarge my coast instead of territory. But the NIV says territory. And so when Jabez is praying and calling on God to enlarge his territory, he's saying, God, if you're going to bless me with everything that you have for me so that you can bless others through me, then you need to expand my borders. You need to expand my territory. Imagine having a piece of property and then having all of these blessings and just stacking them up and not being able to take those blessings outward. And so what he's saying is, if you would expand my territory so that you can use me in a bigger way. In other words, God, I'm making myself available to you. Use me for your purposes and for your plan. God, move my border. God, direct my path. God, open the door to where you want me to go. And so I'm just telling you right now that when you begin to pray this prayer, this is a prayer that touches the very heart of God. So last week we said, oh God, bless me, bless me, bless me. Yeah, we love that prayer. Part two is God bless me so that you can expand my borders so that you can use me. So that you can use me. And it, this is, I'm going to give you two scriptures to just show you. All through the scriptures. But this, 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 this prayer, God enlarge my border, enlarge my territory, expand my territory. It's all through the, uh, the Bible and it, and it touches the very heart of God. It's, it's why God has, wants to use us. Uh, Genesis chapter 12. God tells Abram, go from your country. He calls Abram. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and whoever curses you I will curse. And all peoples, all peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. The heart of God. We know that... Part of the blessing that he's talk, God is talking to Abraham about is the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. That he will be a blessing. We are blessed because of the Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, in Matthew chapter 28, Jesus says this. 
Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Everybody say go. Go. And make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God wants to use us for his glory. He wants to bless us so that we can be a blessing to others, so that we can reach others with the gospel, so that we can be the hands and the feet of Jesus. And most of us know that. This isn't new information. But for your first fill in the blank, it's going to kind of hit you hard, but it's okay because I got a pillow coming afterwards, okay? <laughs> and I want you to see that. Uh, write this down. We don't have a knowing problem. We have a going problem. We do not have a knowing problem. We know that God wants to use us. We have a going problem. We're reluctant to move out of what we know to answer God's call to go. We want the blessing, but we're not sure we want to move the boundary. Come on, somebody. If that's you today, I really, I want to help you take your next step. In fact, I believe that the Holy Spirit has a next step for all of us today if you're a follower of Jesus, if you call yourself a follower of Jesus, if you call yourself a disciple. Because if you were to ask Jabez, if we could just like, you know, beam Jabez down here from heaven for a second, we can't do that. In fact, if we're trying to call people that are dead, that's Satan. We don't do that here. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody's up. Amen. But if we could talk to Jabez, if we could, then, then we, were, and we were to ask him, hey, hey, Jabez, uh, what do I do with all the blessings that God gives me? I think that Jabez would say, I think you should do more than you were doing before. I think you should do more than what you're, you were doing before. Take a step out of your comfort zone. Ask God to enlarge your territory. Expand your boundaries. Move your coast. And then go. God never wants us to stay in the same place. Did you know that? He never, wants to, he never wants us to stay where we start. We've got to move from knowing to going, and then we'll see ourselves growing. Amen. We move from knowing to going, and then we'll be growing. Man, I'm telling you what, you want to, you want to begin to grow in the things of God, start going. It's, it's just the way that God works. So here's what we're actually praying when we're praying this. And some of you may stop praying the prayer of your best today. Okay, I understand. But for those of us that are bold and we're ready, we want, to, we want to go deeper with the Lord. We're praying, God bless me indeed. God bless me, exclamation point, exclamation point. God bless me 100. Then we want to say, God, enlarge our territory. God, so when we're really praying this, this is what I want you to write down. We're asking God to stretch us. We're literally asking God to stretch us. If something can stretch, it means, get this now, it has the potential to go further without tearing or breaking. Now, those of, you, those of you that work out, if you've ever played sports or you work out regularly, you know that stretching is important. Why is it important? It's important because it actually increases your flexibility of your muscles and allows you to be able to do more. If you don't stretch, then there's an the increase of hurting yourself, all right? And as you get older, you realize you can pull a muscle just walking up the stairs. <laughs> so stretching is a good idea. Literally, you know, you just pull a hamstring rolling out of bed. What I do? I don't know. Got to stretch more. So stretching makes our muscles more pliable and, and workable and allows us to be able to accomplish more. Although stretching is important, it's not always fun. Is it? Who likes to stretch? Not too many people. I mean, you stretch, you know, this is what we do, you know, and I'm just saying, I'm speaking from experience. Something falls on the floor, I, on the floor I start to think of whether or not it's worth picking it back up. <laughs> Does anybody else do that? You know, I, Cindy will be coming along soon. I think she, I think she can get that. Not a big deal. Now that I have grandkids, I gotta pick it up on my own. They, they find everything. 
So all of a sudden now I need to st I start to stretch and, and it hurts sometimes when you're you're bending over. You say, where did that muscle come from? Yeah. I didn't know there was a muscle there. So we start stretching them out, and you're like, yo, what's up with that? Why, why does that hurt? And if you ever had an injury and you've had to go to a physical therapist, then you know how stretching hurts, and yet it's helpful. Like, you, they, they're like, I'm just doing this for your own good, brother. <laughs> and it hurts, but you know that you want to break, listen now, break through the limitations mm -hmm. that have been placed on you so that you can do what you're supposed to do. In the same way, I'm just saying, spiritually speaking, God will stretch your faith muscles so that he can use you to do more. Mm -hmm. He wants to stretch us. The problem isn't that we can't stretch <laughs> because he knows that we have the ability to stretch, right? It's not that we can't. It's not that we lack the potential to stretch. The problem is that we're comfortable where we are and we don't really want to stretch. And I'm just saying that that comfort zone limits us where God wants to take us. It limits us. And so I'm saying that for New Song Church, for, for us as followers of Jesus, for, as disciples, it's time for us to stretch over the border of our comfort zone. And that can be scary sometimes. Stretch over the border and break through the limitations that God has for all of us. God has something more for you. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. You've got to break out of that mindset that he doesn't have more for you. Because that mindset is a comfort zone that you're comfortable in. You, you feel comfortable. I'm, I'm going to show you more. But I just want to try to set the, set the tone here for you. All through the Bible... All through the Bible, we see God stretching people beyond where they thought they could ever go. That's right. All through the Bible. And so if you're sitting here going, God can't stretch me. I'm unstretchable. Are you telling me that you're greater than the people that we read about in the Bible? Of, is your body made up of something different? Than, right? I mean, are you, are you really that? Are you really? You're not that special. You are not that special. And I'm telling you, don't tell me that God can't use you. When God called Abraham in Genesis, Abraham was 75 years old. Yes. Bro, I want you to leave your family and go. He's like, I'm thinking of retiring. <laughs> I got my 401k. I'm heading to Sarasota after they clean it up. This is what happened. This is what happened. No, no, no. God says, no, no, no. I want you to go. I want you to go, I want you to leave all that stuff behind, and I want you to go. Genesis 12, that's, what, that's where, it, and, and that's where we want to settle down. No, no, that's when you're just getting revved up. That's right. Don't, don't tell me you're too old to be used by God. You're not too old. Sarah, by the time the son of promise came, Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90. They needed diapers. Come on, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, and they're having a baby. And, they, and they're having a baby. And all I'm saying is, don't, don't put yourself in, and limit yourself in a box. Put yourself in a box that says that I'm too old, God can't use me. Listen, don't say, oh, your past is so bad, God can't. Moses was a murderer. Yeah. Living, living on the run. Yeah. Hiding. For, and, he was, and God called him to stretch him out of his comfort zone. Moses, I want you to be the guy who leads my people out of bondage. Well, Moses like, no, man, you got the wrong guy. I was in the gang. <laughs> I was in a gang. I stabbed a guy when nobody was looking. I got run out of town. As soon as I go back into the city, they're going to nail me. No, 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 no. You got the wrong guy, right? I got a bit of an anger issue. And, and to top it all off, I can't really speak in front of people. Sorry. You, you, can't, you can't use me. And see, Moses could have allowed his past to dictate his future. That's right. He could have done that. He could have just stayed in his comfort zone, stayed in the desert, stayed, stayed out there by looking and talking to rocks, <laughs> bushes. But God wanted to stretch him. God wanted to stretch him. Listen, Gideon, all through the Bible, Gideon was already living in fear when God asked him to stretch. Gideon was hiding. He was living in fear. The angel of the Lord comes to Gideon and says, Hello, mighty warrior. He's like, Who are you talking to? I'm hiding. Oh, you're perfect. Oh, you're afraid? You're perfect. Oh, you got a past? You're perfect. Oh, you're all jacked up? Oh, you are perfect to be 
used by God. God wants to stretch your faith muscles. Doesn't care how old you are. Doesn't care how young you are. He called Jeremiah and he said, listen, I called you from a young boy. He called Timothy. Paul said, uh, Timothy, don't let people look down on your youth. God's going to use you, boy. Right? When he, called, when he called Mary, she was probably about 13, 14 years old. Don't tell me, God, that you're too young. Don't tell me that you're too old. Don't tell me that God can't use you. You don't tell me that you got a pass. He used Lazarus and Lazarus was dead. <laughs> if you're not dead, God can use you. Yes. Jabez wasn't about to allow his past to dictate his future. God yes. bless me. Enlarge my territory. Stretch me over the limitations of my past. Mm. Get me out of this comfort zone. Man, it's so easy for me to just be the prophet of my own self-proclaiming prophecy that I can never do nothing, be nothing, or will ever, ever be used. Break through the label. Break through the limitations. Get out of the comfort zone. Move me beyond my borders, Lord, so that you can use me. Amen. That's the prayer of Jabez. That's the, that's the heart. And God, when God hears you pray like that, he's like, oh. Oh, that's how you want to be. You got my attention, son. You got my attention. God wants to do more in us and through us. But he needs to stretch us. He needs to stretch us. In fact, when you read the uh, epistles, the Apostle Paul wrote all these letters to the churches. He actually, um, he prayed that we would understand this. And I love it. It's found in Ephesians chapter 3. And I want you to read this. This is a great prayer to pray over yourself and over your family and as well. But for this, listen to what, what Paul says. For this reason, I kneel before the Father. In other words, he prays. From whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner be being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power, come on, together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep. See the stretching? See the stretching? How wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. That's a mighty prayer to pray. Now look at this. Now to him, God, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work in us. Man, I wish you would grasp this because you would be like, amen. <laughs> to him be glory in the church and in the Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. 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 God has more for you. Yes. He's even given you the power of the Holy Spirit to help stretch you. But you have to allow him to stretch you. God's going to bring it to the border and he's going to give you the power to cross the line. You got to be willing to do it. You got to be willing to go. God, enlarge my territory for your glory. When we pray that, we're asking to stretch us Stretch us, stretch us. Why, why? Write this down. We're not just praying for God to stretch us, we're praying that God would use us. God has a purpose and a plan for you. We say that so much that it sounds cliche. Oh, God's got a purpose and a plan. But it's true. I'm so proud of everybody that finished up the growth track today. I am so proud. Let's give them a hand. You know what? They're taking their next step. They went through growth track. They're learning. They're learning. They're discovering their God-given purposes and gifts so that they can begin to use those gifts for the glory of God. This is going. Every step of the way, it's going. And what is why? Is to go into all the world and make disciples. Those of you serving on the dream team today, you're serving as part of your worship, 
But you're making disciples. You're helping to make disciples when you serve somebody. When you, when you're, when, when you, were, when you were greeted today, you're seated today. You, people let you in worship. People are watching your children right now, giving them, teaching them about Jesus at their level. All I'm saying is that all of this isn't so that you can come in and just be like, yeah, Holy Ghost, fire, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's so that it's, 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 we, we, we come together so that people that don't know Jesus can come in and find Jesus. And he uses all of our gifts and talents and abilities to do that. That's the beginning of how God wants to use you. But it's not the end. It's just the beginning. Growth track's the beginning. It's not the end. In fact, if you're here today and you have no idea what your purpose is, what your calling is, what your giftings are, then we're going to have more growth tracks for you. And you can see Pastor Barbara afterwards and we'll connect you to help you stretch, help you stretch to that next level. But for those of you who have been gone through growth track and you've, you're serving and you're doing, you're joyfully doing all of these things, what if I told you that God had more for you? Yeah. What if I told you that? Like, like there, is, there is more for you. How do you know there's more for me, Pastor Mike? Because we just read that God is able to do immeasurably more. So the stretching is, is easy for God. It's hard for us. God is able to do immeasurably more than we can think or ask or imagine. I just want to ask you this question. When was the last time you prayed, God, use me more? It's easy to pray, God, bless me more. God, use me more. God is able to do immeasurably more. We think immeasurably more part is for pastors and leaders and evangelists and missionaries. And immeasurably more is, is for those. No, no, no. Immeasurably more is for people who are average, everyday people. Immeasurably more. You see... We think that you got to go to Bible school and God, God calls people that are qualified to be able to do what he calls them to do. Actually, no, it's the opposite. God qualifies you as he calls you. Yeah. He, qualified, he qualifies you as you're called. And I want to tell you, you're called. I wish you would grasp it because for, this is what first, I want, I want to show you. This is going to blow some of your minds. 1 Peter chapter 2. Peter says, But you, New Song Church, are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. I don't feel like a priest. Oh, that's why. A holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, that was before we were saved, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. You are called. You are chosen. You are God's special possession. You, my friends, are a royal priesthood. Welcome to the ministry, baby. <laughs> Welcome to the ministry. In the Old Testament, when we read about the job of the priest, they were set apart. They, the priests had to be set apart. They offered sacrifices. They offered intercession to, for God's people. They communicated to God for other people. And that was before Jesus. But now, every born-again believer has been made a priest before God. Through Jesus Christ. Men, you're a priest in your home. You're the head priest of your home. That's right. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> you're a priest. Ladies, you're a priest. How can I be a priest? Same way I can be a bride. Get over it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Same way. We are the bride of Christ. And everybody's up. Amen. Let me show you, you're a priest. You, you have direct access to God. God. That's, that's, that's a priestly duty. You've been, you've been set apart. 
by the Holy Spirit, sanctified uh, by the Holy Spirit, made holy. You're living a holy life, called to be a living sacrifice. Uh, you live a life of obedience to God's word. You're not, listen, I'm not saying you're perfect. I'm saying you're learning how to do this. You offer up sacrifices of praise and worship to God. You pray for other people. You intercede for other people. You, you help other people find him. Listen, that's the work of a priest. Welcome to the ministry. You're a priest. I don't want to be a priest. It's too late. <laughs> you didn't read the fine print. And all I'm saying is God has immeasurably more for each and every one of you. And if you could get a hold of that, you would understand that when he blesses us, he wants us to expand. God, God can't use me like that, bro. No, no, no. He can. He can use you. You just got to you got to expand out of that comfort zone. You got to let the Holy Spirit stretch you. Man, I wish I had some rubber bands. I'd fling them at you. Yeah. <laughs> Stretch you. Yeah. Next, next time. God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. That's yes. right. Say that again. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the call. Jesus didn't ask the religious people to be his disciples. Did you notice that? He didn't ask all the people that went to school to be their disciples. He asked the average Joes. He asked the average Joes of everyday life, people just like you and me. Yeah. People just like, once they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they turned their city upside down for Jesus. Oh, why don't we see people, why don't we see the body of Christ turning their city upside down for Jesus? Because they're too comfortable. Oh. They're too comfortable. I want to get in, get a word, get out. I want to. I want to get it in, and, and you know we're so inward focused that we're we never think about the going part, just the knowing. Some people are so fat on the word they can't even move. Mm -hmm. They would just start to use it, let, allow themselves to be stretched a little bit. What God would want to do through them, through 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 us. But they turn their city upside down. In Acts chapter 3, Peter and John are going up to pray, going to a prayer meeting, on their way to a prayer meeting. And they see a person that's crippled there. And, and Peter was like, listen, silver and gold I don't have. But in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. And he's healed instantly right there in Acts chapter 3. What happens? They got arrested. By the way, when was the last time you got in trouble for, for the way you prayed? When was the last time you prayed a prayer that would get you in trouble if God answered it? Yeah. Oh, I'm just, nip, I'm just picking, I know. <laughs> they get arrested, they're standing before the same religious people that actually put Jesus and condemned him to death. And they start preaching. The average Joe start preaching to the same people. They're so filled with the Holy Spirit of God. They're so bold. And, and Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, he said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Average Joes, fishermen. And when the religious people looked at them, look at this, verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized they were unschooled, ordinary men. Do you know what that, I know Jacob knows this, but do you know what that word unschooled in the Greek is? It's the word idiotos. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's, it's where we get the word idiot. 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 <laughs> they said, look at these unschooled idiots. I say this with all love and affection. You're an idiot. <laughs> and I'm an idiot. And I'm happy to be an idiot for Jesus. I am happy to be an idiot. I want to be the biggest idiot for Jesus. I don't care if they pick on me. I want to be the biggest idiot for Jesus. And they looked at them and said, these guys, these idiotosses, look at them. And what did they say? They realized 
that they were, they had been with Jesus. Man, I want people to look at me and go, look at that idiot. But boy, he's been with Jesus. <laughs> they didn't know what to do with him. They didn't know what to do with these guys. So, so they, can, they, can, they literally changed the law. They changed the law and said, listen, we're going to let you go. But you're not allowed to preach in the name of Jesus ever again. If you do that, we're going to arrest you. We're going to flog you. We're going to kill you. We're going to do all these things. They, they, they changed the law. Sounds like today, doesn't it? Change the law. They bend it so that they can use it for the... Never mind. And listen to what, in Acts chapter 4, what Peter and, Peter and John don't go, oh, that's it, I'm done. I can't stretch no more. I'm, I can't go anymore. Now they're, now they're being mean. Now they're threatening my job. Now they're threatening my life. Now they're, oh, no, 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 no. What, what does he do? In Acts chapter 4, verse 29, they go back to their, to their church family. They pray and they say this. Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants. Yeah. Lord, Stretch us even even further. Enable us to speak your word with boldness. Enable us to break the ungodly law that they just put into place. Daniel got arrested for praying. Again, when was the last time we got in trouble for praying? They made it a law. Can't pray. What's Daniel do? Get right up there and he prays. Yeah, that's right. God used them for so much more. But you're like, oh, well, those are, the, those, are the, those are the disciples. Of course, they were bold. They were ordinary, but they were called. They were anointed. God, God called them to go. And, and well, guess what? The church started growing so much and just expanding at such a great rate that, that they started to, by the time you get to Acts chapter 6, they didn't have enough people on the dream team to keep up with what God was doing. There was like more ministry going on than people willing to be stretched. That'll preach. So, so, so what do they do? They go back. They, what do they do? They call up the Bible school. Hey guys, do you guys have any pastors? No, 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 no. They go back to the average Joes. They go back to the average show. The average shows. I, give us somebody that loves Jesus and is filled with the Spirit of God. Give us two, give us someone that loves Jesus and is, is, is filled with the Spirit of God. And they come up with a bunch of guys. Two of those guys, you may have heard of them. Stephen and Philip. Yep. Yep. Stephen and, and so Stephen and Philip sign up. They join the dream team. Just two average shows. Feeding widows. That was what they were called to do. Feed, feed, if you guys can hand out some bread, we got a job for you. And so he, um, God begins to bless them. That God begins to pour. He begins to bend down and to pour into them and give them more. Give them more. He begins to enlarge their territory. By Acts chapter 6, the scripture says, Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. Average Joe, average Stephen. God uses Stephen and to preach boldly, so much so his preaching gets him in trouble. He stands before the religious leaders, and ultimately he's the first martyr in the church. Yes. He's killed for his faith. Yeah. And while he's dying and going to be with Jesus, while he's dying, there's a man holding the coats of everybody that's killing him by the name of Saul of Tarsus. And Saul of Tarsus is, what, is listening to what Peter is saying, or, or Stephen was saying, and later on, Saul has his own experience with Jesus. The words planted in his heart already, and he becomes Paul, the apostle. You never know. You never know who's watching you. You never know. God stretches you. He gives you the power to do what he's called you to do for his purposes. For his purposes. Yeah. God enlarge my territory. Yeah. So what happens? Stephen dies. Great persecution breaks out in the book of Acts. The church is scattered throughout the world. And see, but here's the thing. The devil can't stop the church. Right. He, he cannot stop it. It's like throwing gas on a fire. Yeah. And so when he tries to stop it, oh, it comes up over here. And oh, it comes up over here. It comes up. God enlarges uh, Philip's territory and sends him to Samaria. 
Just sends him. Philip is running for his life, goes to Samaria. Acts chapter 8, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip, another average Joe, went down to a city in Samaria, Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. God starts using Philip. Signs, wonders, yeah. miracles. The people are getting saved. The gospel is spreading. And all I'm telling you is that God will use you like that if you're willing to be stretched. Yeah. All I'm telling you is that God will bless you so you can be a blessing. And he'll stretch you if you're willing to allow him to stretch you and use you for more. you got to just keep stretching. You keep stretching, he'll keep giving you. He's able to do more. He's able to do more. Now, now, get this, get this. An angel of the Lord appears to, to uh, in Acts chapter 8, an angel, verse 26, an angel of the Lord appears to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kend, I can't say that word, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship. So this is a God-fearing man, doesn't know Jesus, but is, 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 worships the God of Israel. And he's, he is the, the head eunuch for the queen of Ethiopia. And verse 28, and on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near. The spirit of God talking to just an average Joe. Didn't go to Bible school or anything, just, just an average Joe. Spirit of told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. And listen to what he says. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. And if you keep reading, what, what you really realize is the Ethiopian was actually reading Isaiah chapter 53 where it talks about Jesus suffering and dying for our sins. This Ethiopian gets saved and gets water baptized. And what you don't know, but church history tells us, the Bible doesn't, but church history tells us that this Ethiopian eunuch goes back to Ethiopia and is the first person to bring the gospel to Africa. Yeah. You never know. You never know how God's going to use you if you're willing to be stretched. You never know how God is going to use you to further his glory. And what I'm saying is when you pray to God and ask him to expand your territory, what you're really saying is, God, would you expand my influence? Expand my influence. When was the last time you asked God for more influence? Not so you can have a raise, not so you can be famous, not so that you can be more, but so that he can be more. When was the last time the church woke up and said, God, use me for your glory today. God, with, I want to be a blessing to anybody that you bring my way. When was the last time you prayed and said, God, bring me somebody that needs Jesus today. When was the last time you woke up in the morning and said, God bless me that I might be a blessing. Expand my sphere of influence. Expand my territory. Would you use me in some way to be a blessing today? Would you use me on the train, on the bus, at the job, at the school? Would you, would you bring somebody my way? When was the last time, God, that you used us like and what is the limitation, that we, the reason why we can't? And how foolish does it look in light of eternity? When was the last time you asked God to pray that? Have you ever asked God to do that? Or do you never quite get out of the I need list to, to, to the I'll go? So for 21 days of prayer, we're, we're, coming, we're, 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 we're asking God to stretch us so that we could be a blessing. Stretch me out of my comfort zone. As the worship team comes up, I want to close with just this idea. That you're called. You're already called. If you're a born again believer, you're saved by the grace of Jesus by the blood of Jesus, by the grace of God, through faith, you're already called. This is the, this is the mandate. 
Go into all the world and make disciples who are going to then turn around and make disciples. Not only are you called, but you're able to do something in your sphere of influence, whatever that would be. Different for you, different for me. There's people in your life that I'll never be able to reach. There's people in your life, everyday walk of life, that will never come in through these doors, but that you would be the Jesus that they see. And so, we've been, we've been, you know, asking God, God bless us, but we want to keep it balanced. He's able, are you willing? You just need to ask. Psalm chapter 2 verse 8 says, God says, ask me. He's waiting for us to ask you. Ask me and I will give you the nations. Ask me. Pray and ask me. God, expand my territory. Give us the nations. Give us the community. Give us our city. God, as a possession for your glory. As an inheritance for your glory. God wants to reach people through you. Would you stand with me, please? God's getting ready to do some amazing things this week. He's already been doing amazing things. But he wants to reach people. And I'm telling you, we are in the last days, and I'm telling you, we're in the last hour of the last days. Jesus could come back before we finish. Come, Lord Jesus. excuses and limitations that we place on ourselves that others have placed on us look foolish the only thing that matters in heaven is who's there and who's not everything that we're working hard for and planning for and this whole world is going to be demolished by the judgment of God and he's going to create a whole new heaven and a whole new earth and so everything that we're working we can't take with us. You can leave it. Let your family fight over it. But you can't take it with you. My wife always says you never see a U-Haul behind a hearse. You can't do it. Now, today, today. And he says, ask me and I'll give you the nations. Ask me. Ask me to enlarge your territory and I'll do it to be used by you and I'll give you what you ask. Imagine if we ask God, would you expand your sphere of influence in my family? In my school? In my workplace? At the bodega? When he's, when the guy's making my bacon, egg, and cheese, come on somebody. <laughs> give him a little bit more of a tip and tell him God loves him. I know something I can start today with the barista that I see every day at Starbucks for my grande caramel macchiato with extra whip. At the store that I shop at, the people that I see on the bus five days a week, God would you begin to expand my territory? And I'm scared to death of that, but I know your promise is that you'll always be with me. And your promise is that you'll put words in my mouth to just love somebody, to just bless somebody, to just maybe pray for somebody. I can't tell you how many times we've prayed this prayer. How many times? I'm not going to put myself in that. How many times my wife has prayed this prayer? She's literally gotten on the train and said, God, send somebody my way. Every time she says that, he does it. I'm going to be honest with you, in my flesh, sometimes I get irritated. 
I just want to spend time with my wife. And then I got to repent and ask God to forgive me. Because here he is using her. And here I am whining about it. Expand my sphere of influence. It's not about stuff. God doesn't want to bless us and expand our territory so we can put more stuff on it. He wants to bless us and expand our territory because it's not about things. It's about people. It's about, it's about people. It's always been about people. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. I just said, what would our community look like? What would our nation begin to look like if every born-again believer was willing to be stretched just a little bit more? You're probably, I know I'm here today as a follower of Jesus, an average Joe, who was willing to be stretched, but before I gave my life to Jesus, somebody was willing to stretch themselves and share Jesus with me. I'd be willing to bet that you're here today because somebody was willing to be stretched and they prayed for you or they witnessed to you or they reached out to you when you were at your loneliness and they, 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 they shared the gospel, they shared hope, they, they allowed the spirit of God to move through them in some way and you're here today because of that. Are you going to pass it on? Are you going to, are you going to return the favor? Are you going to start to ask God now to, to bless me indeed?